Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gore Call, in which we take the time to speak small cap executives after they put up important news. With us today, happy to have him back, Alan Paul Silverstein of Imagine AR, trades in Canada IP, and for friends who do that's under IPNFF. Look, for those of you who love the future of augmented reality, you're going to love this interview because as the name applies, Imagine AR is an AR company that enables businesses, B2B, to create their own mobile phone AR campaigns with no programming technology, and they have the big name contracts, tier one, global renowned companies to back it. They're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. For those of you who are saying AR, I don't know, I don't know how big it's going to be. Don't take my word for it. Apple CEO Tim Cook said, quote, augmented reality will play an important role in how we use technology in the future and promise to be as influential in our society as the smartphone. In the future, people wonder how we live without augmented reality. So if you need somebody else to give you that third-party validation, that's it. Imagine AR, the number of partners and customers they have, almost too many to mention, but let's say Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada, McCormick, a global Fortune 500 company, Grubhub, the NFL alumni, two biggest soccer teams in Spain, uh, Brazil's 2022 football champion, the Baltimore Ravens, on Jet Media with Ronaldinho's mobile app, so they've proven their technology, and now they put out this amazing update uh, to talk about what's going on with the company. AP, welcome back, my friend. Hi, George. Good to see you again. It's been a while, but certainly it's been quiet on the outside, but far from quiet on the inside. But thank you. That's for what it feels up. like after this update. It feels like you've kind of been in stealth mode. Uh, and now, so let me start big picture, because I think investors want to hear the big picture. Like, AP, what's going on? Your quote right. says... Despite the deeply challenging capital markets environment for small caps, we continue to execute very well on the one thing we can control, our world-class augmented reality technology. Our book contracts, as well as other pending deals that we talked about, and a strong pipeline of potential deals with world-class organizations is proof positive that we have the right solution to meet the unstoppable paradigm shift of augmented reality. So big picture, how are the, that seems to tell me that there's a lot going on in the surface. Talk to us. I think what made the most sense in the last few months is we looked back at the, how revenue is being generated, contracts being done, and kind of reposition how we go forward in a way that we can guarantee you know, the monthly run rate of revenue, the annual run rate of revenue, and really focus strategically with some of the partnerships that we've kind of been pursuing and have been announced previously, and also look technology-wise how we can bring it to the next level. And I think in this quiet time, although it's appeared, obviously, from investor side is looking for press releases, we really kind of restructure and reposition how we want to go forward that's going to take the next jump and lead that we have with our platform and really ensure those growth opportunities with revenue with the new way we're going to roll out this platform, not only just in the world of AR, but some additional plug-in technologies which have tremendous amount of interest in creating interactivity and immersion, similar to something like generative AI, chat GPT. Let's, okay, we'll get to that because I want to hear about that. First things first, $535,000 book to date in this fiscal year in contracts. Why book versus revenue and what, what should that tell shareholders? Well, it's always booked in these contracts. Again, we when we get audited, we also give all the contracts to the auditor. So these are booked deals that are definitely going ahead and proceeding. But as a SaaS type of company, you only recognize the revenue when A, the app goes out, and then B, is amortized over the life of the contract. So there's a big disconnect from a perception-wise when you turn around and say, hey, your revenue is always low. But whether it's the Hip Hop Hall of Fame or you know the Ravens or other things we work with, everything is going to be placed, even with a signed contract, over a length period of time and usually these contracts go anywhere from two to three years so it gets recognized on a monthly basis so as long as we keep the booking solid and continue to grow that way the revenue will always follow and like i said previously as we continue forward we're going to shift some of the ways we're going out there to ensure we have that high growth opportunity with the partners we we're really focused more on the volume kind of deals with the partners and able to get the revenue in faster and recognize it sooner so as opposed to bigger, it sounds like as opposed to bigger, you know, slower moving, big contracts, it sounds like more smaller, faster, iterative kind of contracts. Is that what you're saying? Right. And and looking at some of the partnership relationships we've announced in the past uh, and certainly 
let's say Learfield sidearm that's been out there and we had a tremendously successful proof of concept with them with college football playoffs, having the discussions, which again, I can't get into further, they have 1500 college clients throughout North America. So how best to approach that in a way that we can go out there and become the standard AR technology that can be used and integrated within apps of all sports college teams out in the United States. Well, and let's talk about that. That's a big, for me, that's a big indication of the strength of a company's product service technology, which is repeat customers. Yes. Um, and it sounds like from your quote and what you just said there that our, our existing customers are part of the Ravens, Jet Media, you know, Learfield. I know you probably can't be specific as I'd like you to be, but that would be putting out material information. But are they coming back for more? Is that what you're... Are you intimating that? that I would say we're in a lot of planning. More? Yeah. And certainly the Ravens and us have been in quite a number of conversations, which is exciting. Uh, they're out there, you know, securing sponsors as well. And we've already discussed how the forward season is going to proceed together. And there's some tremendous opportunities for us in there, both from a revenue wise, as well as potential as we go forward into some of the deals and opportunities they plan on releasing it. Certainly signing up Lamar Jackson for the next five years. That was big. That and just happened Odell. on Friday, I think, right? Yeah, and getting Odell in. You got two big personalities and having that attached potentially with the technology we have with the team. We have a two-year contract with them. I think gives us a great kind of exposure opportunity and really leverage that into continue growing the business throughout professional sports in a big way, not only in North America, but around the world as well. It seems like sports teams are the ones that are kind of really grasping on AR first, uh, generally, at least with, when it comes to Imagine AR. Right. Uh, do you think that you you did you did a real one real cool thing with the Ravens? You did one really cool thing with Learfield for the NCAA championship, you know, championship night with the trophy. Do you think that sports just a couple more deals in sports, your sports pipeline kind of might burst? I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but are you on the edge on the cusp? How, what does it feel like? It's taken a lot longer than all of us would like. Obviously, it's nice to have success of the Ravens behind us and college football playoffs. But with those successes, these organizations take time, their bureaucracies, they have a lot of decision makers, and they have to make that commitment within their own team. And whether it's the revenue officers or the sponsorship teams, the premium team, all the groups that are in there to cohesively agree how to proceed. And I think it's taken longer than all of us wanted, but at the same time, it solidified us into a specific strategy, working closely together with these organizations and rolling it out in a very methodical and practical way. And these initial tests, for lack of a better word, or proof of concepts gave great credibility and also gave the inside organizations the tools they can use to go to their sponsor, go to their participant, their partners, their relationships, and demonstrate what went out there, showing the impressions in social media, showing the quality of what can be done, and selling on the new season going forward. So certainly now the NFL teams have all been regrouping uh, and deciding how to proceed forward. You're seeing the NHL playoffs continue, so a lot of NHL teams now are starting to regroup and get ready for next season. Same with NBA. So you're seeing a lot of that shift over. But we always felt sports will get a lot of attention, but it'll bring you the brands, and then brands will bring you some of those significant opportunities as well. And that's, I think that's a formula that works well. And we brought in some new advisors, which we discussed, who have tremendous experience in the world of sports and specifically the business end of sponsorship. And I think they're starting to hit their stride in a very big way with us as well now. Uh, you've got an MOU, the last big press we should put out, and then you went to stealth mode, but it's a big one. An MOU, so it's not signed, it's not binding, it's not a deal yet, but I want to break it down. A global digital publishing company, first of all, I want to find out, okay, what does that mean first? And then we're going to go through the other amounts. Is that... Is that a Hollywood movie studio? Is it a it's, uh, a... it's a company that works with very specific, world-renowned talent in sports, entertainment, music, and influencers who are looking to integrate our platform and technology into the apps of all those renowned individuals to drive engagement and revenue opportunities. So there's a range of it, obviously, depending on the commitment of 10 to, I think, 25, 27, but something we're looking to proceed on in 2023 together with them 
and we have regular discussions and conversations as well. So this is ongoing, but we're pretty optimistic as we go forward that that's something that's going to come to fruition as well for Imagine AR and that company. Yo, so it's been a couple of months. How long until that MOU do you think is a go, no go? Because it's not done yet. So how much ballpark? Again, I know you can't give specifics. I but can't give specifics. And we're, we talk pretty regularly at this point, but that's nothing else I can say further with it. I appreciate it, George. But again, there's specific reasons I can't say anything. So right. I'm gonna leave it at that. And we'll continue on with the discussions. But like I said, the quietness has been for a couple of reasons, which we discussed. And we'll cover, you know, as we continue with this interview, some of the other areas. Um. Let's go back to, look, in your quote, you said the one thing we can control is our world-class AR technology. The one thing you can't control is the capital markets environment. But no matter what, that's part of the equation. And you have a couple of quotes here. One is you've significantly reduced expenses and you're, so that's part one, and actively engage in financing dis discussions with strategic investors that have already yielded commitments above your current share price. Uh, you know, how does the general, how does the finance, how do the finances of the company look right now? Obviously, they're not as strong as you'd like, but, you know, what can you talk to investors about on that? Well, what I could say is we're obviously very, very aware of our current cash position. And we responded very quickly starting in early, in the end of last year, early this year, cutting back and making sure that we can get through this transition phase while we go out and look to raise money for the company and as you know as you've just brought up we have some commitments already which are signed uh that are for financing and i expect that it's something that probably would be announced in the near term once we get through uh uh maybe a few days or whatever a certain period of time and then we'll announce those as well but they are above where the stock currently is as well and it's something that demonstrates to us also the faith and commitment in what we have and what our pipeline is going to bring to the table. And we're pretty optimistic from that standpoint. But again, it's something that we're taking day to day. We'll see how we go and we will announce it once it's completed. And I think strategic partnerships is another key area we really focused on for the last few months of those key areas. And rather than trying to do, as I always say, the shotgun approach and, and buckshot, really narrow down those key few partnership opportunities of significance where we can hone our platform, add some potential enhancing technology that's immersive engaging, and then really run up that lane and focus on major growth opportunities with potential clients in the vertical markets that we're looking at. So dominoes are close to falling and almost, is that, a, is that an accurate way to say it? Or <laughs> could go either way. You know, it's kind of- Any other questions, George? We can go through <laughs> Second part of the quote that I liked is, and I've been pushing other companies to do this and they haven't. I'm glad, I'm glad that you're starting to potentially embrace this. Moreover, with some strategic money in place, we're considering providing our valuable shareholders an opportunity to participate through the new finance exemption. Yes. It's never been available before to non-accredited investors, uh, free trading stock. And Can we talk about that? Because I love this exemption. I don't know if shareholders know this, but it allows Bob and Mary who are not accredited investors of Imagine AR to participate in the financing and, you know, do $5,000, you know, they can't do a hundred thousand dollars, but do five, but you get a hundred, 200 investors together who put in a couple thousand dollars, $5,000. And now the company's topped up and it comes from what I'd like the lifeblood, the, the real shareholders, not the guys who are looking to sell it in four months plus a day to scalp the warrant. Right. What, what can you talk to? What can you tell us about that? Cause I like that. Yeah, it's something like, and it's funny when you said scalp the warrant. I mean, in essence, it's a, it's a share with the warrant, and it's something that gives the regular day to day retail investor an opportunity to participate if they believe in the company and they feel comfortable that, hey, I get a share and I get a warrant at an extremely reasonable price. And if I believe the market of AR is going to grow and continue, and we have a great position and a moat around us. It gives them an opportunity to come in with us. And I, like you said, the non-accredited investor. So we do have quite a significant amount of investors. Uh, there's a lot of very loyal ones who contacts that we speak to and regularly. And it's something that we really had looking once we get past this current issue with the strategic investors is potentially to open it up to allow us to have everyday investors who are out there retail to really have that made available to them as well. As you brought up, it's a great tool. It's a great opportunity 
for many different people to put in whatever amounts they want and you have that opportunity to have both the share and the warrant for a period of time as well. So yeah, great- I got lo- I got to tell you, as a Gorecom, I'm on the side of the small guy, the small investors. I know that the big investors play a role. I'm not in any way, you know, poo-pooing them. But the fact of the matter is, I've always, I've, I've never liked the fact that Bob and Mary can't invest five thousand dollars in the private placement. They're not accredited, but they put up to five thousand, and they do five thousand dollars, and they get the warrant. So if everything yes. goes well in the next 12, 24 months, they got this, you know, almost like free call on the upside and it's yep. never been available to them. So I'd be curious. I would love to hear maybe from, from imaginary investors on, on Twitter and Agoracom on, on any other platform as to whether, you know, they consider something like that. Cause I think that's something you guys, you guys should do. Um, last, last thing I want to talk about is you brought a couple of really cool advisors on uh, Steve Ziff, John Torres. Uh, you know, how help, why did you bring them on? Cause you keep bringing on these strategic advisors. What is that's different about these guys? Again, it's been quiet for a few months from the outside, but Steve also moved into a major new position. Steve has been very renowned as a thought leader in tech and sports, former CMO of the uh, San Diego chargers. He's worked with the Panthers. He worked with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Highly respected within the industry, has a tremendous network, a very high level. John Torres has been his right-hand guy for years, and he also is working with, closely with him. And also, tremendous access to senior C-level executives and EVP levels of many top sports franchises in all the four leagues. And when we brought them in, it took a while to get them set because at the same time, they're putting their name on it, and they have a reputation in the industry that's pretty significant. And I think we're starting to see the the fruits of the labor of their relationships in the last you know thirty days of bringing together introductions in their network and relationship to Imagine AR to a lot of organizations at top levels who weren't aware of Imagine AR. And it's nice walking in with some examples, whether it's working with Learfield or Baltimore Ravens or you know the La Liga teams, bringing that portfolio of opportunity to them and looking how to drive new revenue. So we're pretty happy. Uh, the way we're working, we kind of talk pretty regularly now uh, on a weekly basis and then some, sometimes even more so per week, and bringing in their network relationships that I think going to definitely add significantly to our pipeline as we go forward in the next 60, 90 days. All right. So these guys look like they're really making some things happen. Exactly. And, uh, uh, clearly, they're evangelists. They're big believers. They They see something that most people yeah they would not put their name on this company george i mean that's one thing also and then even once they signed on we spent a lot of time reviewing the tech what we could do having a lot of calls who's the targets and because their network and relationships are so large globally in so many different organizations in sports and entertainment we really spent a lot of time focusing on what we believe would be you know the low-hanging fruit the initial low areas that we can kind of build upon and start growing together with their relationships and putting their reputation in line to get out there. And needless to say, our, our sales meeting opportunities have grown significantly with them. And we expect that to continue. And hopefully, as we all expect, revenue to then chase that as we continue forward this year. And I guess that's where in your quote, you say, and a strong pipeline of potential deals with world-class organizations. I've got to presume some of that confidence come from Ziff and Torres. Absolutely, as well as through the Learfield sidearm relationship and also hip hop, which has been very slow. They've been spending a lot of time building out their portfolio of business, their relationships and their partners. And we've kind of remained in contact with them, but they're talking TV shows and events and everything else. And then how to integrate our technology. And in this case, we're going to do a mobile app for them into that pipeline they have and then grow together for the next three years. AI, let's have that discussion. And I, I'm i always careful not to have a discussion like this because it's a buzz phrase and so many companies use it as a buzz phrase. Now, Gorecom internally, we've been doing not building nothing but AI in, in our internal processes. And you're going to start seeing, the investor are going to start seeing some of that externally as well right. and what we create and produce. Um, you mentioned at the, at the outset that AI could have a role in augmented reality. Tell me, because I don't, I don't see it clearly. Tell me where you see AI and AR intersecting. Right, generative AI and LLM, large language models as well, 
has a tremendous place in the world of AR. Because when you look at AR right now, it's a matter of placing a digital overlay into the real world. But if I can make it interactive and informative, for example, why couldn't I have a mascot of a sports team talk to me on my phone? Ultimately, you're going to go headsets years down the road. But why couldn't it communicate when I show up and tell me, the history of the team, uh, about the stadium, ah, okay. what's going on in the team. Why can't I go into resorts or destination locations that are tourism and ask that character, that uh, hologram character, what's going on and ask questions, text the voice, and then give the overlay as I'm looking through the camera of the highlights of what's there as well. There's tremendous visual okay. interactive opportunities. And because we're Microsoft certified platform for years, as you're aware, ChatGPT, just received last year $10 billion from Microsoft. So OpenAI is built into the architecture of Azure, which is what defines our entire, our entire CMS uh, architecture. So there's a synergistic opportunity that already exists, the ability to integrate it and provide these unique interactivities, even doing virtual stores. Why can't I be in a store virtually and have that sales opportunity asking questions about products, reviews, Things are customized, personalized based on my history, what I've done and interact and what I purchased and deliver those offers direct to me wherever I am in the world in real time. Additionally, AI gives the opportunity to fine tune modeling in the world of AR, the delivery of AR interactive models and 3D models in the real world and seeing what defines reaction, what has the higher interactivity with sports fans or consumers and which one don't and adjust real time those interactive opportunities using AI. So there's the informative education side Again, imagine I have a 3D heart in a classroom. I look at it. I'm interacting with it. I'm asking questions, and it's answering the questions right on my phone while I'm interacting with the model. And you could you could deliver that technology right now? Could you deliver that right now where We're George comes at the store, and uh, there's a hologram of George? Not that anyone wants to see that, but and it's interacting because the you know Mary is asking questions, and my avatar, because it's been trained Correct. by AI, knows Correct. the answers. Correct. Can you deliver that now or is that going to be three months from now or what do you see? I, th I think it's something that as we go through, we're working right now on another big upgrade of the SDK, which is part of the reasons of having the conversation with partners, including the Ravens, what, they, what we're looking to do. And then we see at the second half of 2023 really is the area that we're going to start really focusing on those solutions of AI with AR, having the holograms come up, be interactive, informative in areas that are not just sports. We're really looking to expand into the other vertical markets where we can get consistent revenue, but also a significant higher price point versus where we are with sports. And although we've done, again, like I said, 530 in bookings, 530,000 a day, I don't think we've achieved where we expect to be. And we're pretty optimistic going forward that the sports will continue to grow through the partnerships, relationships, the MOU you mentioned, but these other areas and overlaying the AI opportunity in it, Web3 type of stuff, I think is going to really add fuel to the fire and really position us towards the second half of the year going into the holiday season. AP, will you be back on more often now? I mean, you, you have to go through this. Is this stealth period still continuing? Yeah, have, have you just peeked your head up and going back into cover? Or are you going to come out? Are you going to be out a lot well, more? We're going to come out now. It's, again, it was going through, obviously, the financing challenges in the capital market. It was redirecting, looking at the product and our product set and the architecture deciding, looking at some of the strategic partners and having a lot of in-depth conversations of where the company should go and really start to grow the annual run rate of revenue, the monthly run rate of revenue and start building upon all the platform. You know, our burn rate has always been mostly focused on the tech. Uh, if you look at all our financials, we spent a significant amount on building the tech and I think we've positioned it where it's pretty stable, it's commercialized, we're doing one more major upgrade now to take the SDK to the next level as more of a drop-in plug-in kind of turnkey solution rather than just put in the platform, design how you want to go, but mostly make it a turnkey. So the launch of it is quicker. The integration is faster, less overhead required from the partners and from teams, but also allows us to go into other areas in retail, education, hospitality. Yeah, and just do That is a big, that is huge. I got to admit, and that's a plug really and play. huge. And then overlay the AI interactivity, which is already part of the Microsoft Azure cloud solutions, turn that on and then build that in and as well as we go forward. Just promise me you're not going to build an, an application that is dropping you and all imaginary shareholders homes 
and we have to look at you to ask questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind getting, you know, not us, but maybe some of the plans of projects that we're working on is a good, yeah. good yeah. idea, George. And oh, yeah, that's awesome. You. Look, I'm glad we had that conversation because so many companies saying, George, God, we're going to incorporate AI and they don't really talk about any real use applications just to use the buzz term. But I completely see that use case scenario. Uh, and I think that would be awesome. So, uh, you know, if, if there's stuff that comes up in the second half, that could really accelerate in a big way. AP, hey, thanks for joining us, my man. Always good that you, you come on and make sure you come back soon, okay? We'll be back soon. Thank you very much, George. I appreciate it. And I thank the investors for their patience. Apologize. But again, sometimes you got to redirect, re-strategize, reposition. And I think we're sitting in a great area, starting with the bookings we have to date, but then growing forward as we continue through 2023 and years beyond. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for reaching out, George. And I promise I'll be on much sooner than I was before the last time. We'll hold you to that, man. We'll hold you to that. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening to my podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Alan Paul Silverstein, CEO at Imagine AR, Trades in Canada, IP for Friends in the US, IPNFF. For those new to the story, you love what you heard about Tim Cook, Apple CEO, said about the future of AR. You heard about the referenceable accounts that uh, Imagine AR already has the growth that may be coming and you want to do your due diligence, get to the company's profile page on Agoracom. And then from there, go to the company's main website, do your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.